Hey, how's it going? Uh, we'll be talking about the play Trifles today uh, by Susan Glassbell, and uh, it was originally published in 1916, so over 100 years ago, and you could probably tell that by uh, some of the, the dated language, but then also just the, the way just everything is done, right? Like, you would never uh, do, uh, you would never treat a crime scene the way it gets treated here in this play. Um, but it does make for uh, an, an interesting story. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about it uh, in terms of the some of the symbolism in the play, uh, just uh, so that we can get like a, just a multi-layered perspective, not just what happens in it. And then we'll um, just talk briefly about some of the themes and the ideas that uh, Glassbell, the author, is trying to uh, present. And then we'll talk about how um, the things that the characters say in the play can be incorporated uh, into your essay as quotes to support the argument that you're making uh, for your essay. So let's go ahead and get started on it and just uh, look at this first uh, th this first set of highlighted phrasing. This is on uh, page two. And one of the things that over the years students have found interesting is the question of what does a, a guilty person look like or seem like because um, you know many write if you look at it through the lens of she more than likely murdered John Wright uh, you could see that maybe she's acting like someone who knows she's going to be in trouble but uh, if you look at it in maybe a slightly different uh, vein and a slightly different perspective maybe it's not necessarily quite that. Um, doesn't mean that she didn't do it, but maybe it's not because she thinks she's going to jail or anything. So, and again, I'm not going to read this whole um, section here, uh, but just want to emphasize um, Hale describing how she was behaving uh, uh, when he saw her, just her rocking back and forth and making uh, folds in her, her apron. And uh, the idea of her looking uh, queer, uh, is, again, 1916, it, it's talking more of that, like she looks like she's uh, a little confused, maybe uh, out of place right here. And she looked like she didn't know what she was going to do next, and she was kind of done up, right? And then the county attorney says, well, how did how'd she feel about you visiting? And Hale, the sheriff, is again, like, you know, saying she didn't seem to mind. He asked if he could speak to John. She says no. He asks why. She says because he's dead. And then, listen to what um, Hale says here. He goes, I got up with the idea of going up there. I walked from there to here. Then I said, what did he die of? He died of a rope around his neck. And just went on pleading at her apron. Okay. So, again, we get this introduction to uh, Minnie Wright. Um, she's clearly... Um, shaken by something that's happened um, whether she uh, you know killed her husband or woke up next to a dead husband uh, in bed she either way she's not uh, in the best uh, mental state right okay one of the themes of the play is uh, men versus women not necessarily in an adversarial way but I think uh, there's Glassbell's doing sort of an oversimplif uh, oversimplification of maybe how men view the world versus how women view the world. And uh, you see this teasing um, uh, that the, um, that the uh, women uh, uh, sort of endure from the men. Uh, I, I don't think the men are uh, trying to necessarily hurt anyone's feelings or they're, you know, they're, they're not the bad guys in the play. Uh, but they um, are a uh, an antagonist for Mrs. Peters and Mrs. Hale. So, right, uh, Peters, her fruit, Mrs. Peters, her fruit did freeze. She worried about it when it turned so cold. She said she said the fire would go out and her jars would break. Sheriff, well, you can't beat the women. Hell for murder and wondering about her preserves. And then the attorney, I guess before we've th we're through, she may have uh, some more serious uh, things to worry about than her preserves, right? And then we get, and I love this in plays, not so much in movies, but uh, I love in plays when they work the title of the play into the, the dialogue. Well, women are used to worrying over trifles. And one of the things, again, the, the themes of this play is that 
the big things uh, can oftentimes be found uh, in the little thing, right? The uh, sometimes the trifles of life are is, is where sort of the um, maybe the biggest secrets or the biggest revelations uh, in life uh, can be found. So, okay, let's go to uh, page six, about three fourths of the way down. Now, uh, this is you know a pretty uh, simple thing, right? If if many Wright had murdered John Wright just by uh, picking up a gun and, and shooting him, then the case would probably be a little bit more open and shut. But um, the fact that, uh, you know, waiting for someone to go to sleep, tying a rope around their neck, and then strangling them to death, it seems like a very inconvenient way to go about murdering someone uh, if you want them dead. So that's sort of the thing. They got to figure out uh, why she would use you know such a complicated way to, to kill someone rather than a gun being in the house why not just pick it up and shoot them um, Mrs. Peters uh, says Mr. Henderson said coming out that what was needed for the case was a motive something to show anger or sudden feeling now I have this uh, phrase here highlighted uh, the law is the law um, unless you're quoting this specific line from Mrs. Peters try to avoid the phrase the law is the law in your essay just because it is a bit of a cliche again if you're quoting this as something a character says and then you're going to discuss the quote uh, then that's fine but just saying it as part of one of your sentences you want to uh, avoid that it's just become again a little overdone in this essay and so here we are on page nine and I love what Mrs. Hale says here. Uh, we get a glimpse into uh, Minnie Wright and John Wright's relationship. And I think the more that we learn about the relationship, the more Mrs. Hale and Mrs. Peters kind of band together. And even though Minnie Wright, Mrs. Wright isn't there, the three of them, I think, have this sort of unified vision that's um, tied around uh, John Wright and the bird. So. Let's look at uh, what she has to say here. Uh, Mrs. Hale, I wish I had, uh, uh, I do wish Mrs. Peters, I wish I'd come over sometimes when she was here. Mrs. Peters tries to let her off the hook. Oh, you're awfully busy with your house and your children. And then Mrs. Hale, I love what she says here. She says, I could have come. I stayed away because it wasn't cheerful, and that's why I ought to have come. I never liked this place. Maybe because it's down in a hollow and you don't see the road. I don't know what it is. But it's a lonesome place and always was. I wish I'd come over to see Minnie Foster sometimes. Okay, so a couple of things happening here. Uh, I like that she says, I should have come. I didn't because it wasn't cheerful, and that's why I should have, right? Uh, that idea that, yeah, it was uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, she, it was something she didn't want to do. But it's because of that is why she should have done it, right? If it was bad for her, um, just to visit, imagine what it was like for Minnie Wright to live th like that, you know. And then the idea that they're down in a hollow, so you can't even see the road from their house, so it's even extra isolated. And students have pointed out in the past that uh, st uh, that you know one of the first things that uh, someone who is uh, being abusive does is try to isolate someone. Uh, you know, from like friends and family, trusted people, and we, we you know we don't get that word here in this play, uh, the word abuse, but the fact that they are isolated, and the fact that you know we see what happens later with the bird, uh, it's 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 easy to infer that that might have been the case there. Um, Mrs. Peters says, "Oh, you know, don't beat yourself up, Mrs. Hale. Somehow we just don't see how it is with other folks." until something comes up. And, and, and that's true, right? Mrs. Hell, not having children makes less work, but it makes a quiet house. And Wright out to work all day and no company when he did come in? Did you know John Wright, Mrs. Peters? No, I mean, I've seen him around town. They say he was a good man. Yes, good. I mean, he didn't drink and kept his word as well as most, I guess, and paid his debts, but he was a hard man, Mrs. Peters. Just to pass the time of day with him? <sighs> like a raw wind that gets to the bone. Okay, so I think this is an important thing, right? If At the beginning of the play, we were sort of getting a glimpse of uh, 
I mean, what does a guilty person look like? Uh, we're getting a, a glimpse of, you know, what do we mean when we say uh, someone is a, a good man, a, a good person? Uh, you know, maybe by some definitions, John Wright, you know, uh, right, he's honest, doesn't drink, paid his debts. I mean, seems to be a, a contributing member of, of society, which is, you know, a good thing to do. But I like Mrs. Hell. Um, angle on it where she thinks about good not just in that sense but what would it be like to be his wife right what would it have been like to be there all day right uh you know working and then knowing he's going to come home at the end of the day and then having to spend the evening and the night you know what would that be like and the fact that she kind of shivers and um you know can't really think about it without having a physical reaction kind of says a lot about John Wright now that doesn't mean just because he's a bad hang doesn't necessarily mean that he's a uh, evil person but the more that is revealed about their relationship I think the more that we see that John Wright um, was more than just someone who uh, paid his debts and, and didn't drink he he might have had some some of his own problems all right she goes, I should think she would have wanted a bird. But what do you suppose with it? went with it? I don't know, unless it got sick and died. All right. And then here we get this symbol of the bird um, as many right. So um, that's one of the symbols the bird takes on uh, throughout the play. Um, you weren't from around here, were you? You didn't know uh, many. Not till yesterday. She... Come to think of it, she was kind of like a bird herself. Real sweet and pretty, but kind of timid and fluttery. How she did change. Tell you what, Mrs. Peters, why don't you take the quilt in with you? It might take up her mind. Okay. So this is uh, sort of the, the crux of the play, right? That we find the bird's dead body, and then everything comes uh, uh, into focus for Mrs. Peters and Mrs. Hell. Oh, Mrs. Peters, it's the bird. But, Mrs. Peters, look at it. It's neck. Look at its neck. It, it's all to the other side. Somebody wrung its neck. And uh, I would like to say that uh, I, I know a lot of times when you're reading these plays, and I know I did this when I was a student, and I like to just skip to the dialogue. Let me just try to get through it as fast as possible. But uh, you really want to take the time when reading a play Look at the stage directions, because sometimes the script will have some information hidden in the, the stage directions. Their eyes meet, a look of growing comprehension, of horror, steps are heard outside. Mrs. Hell slips bo box under some quilt pieces and sinks into her chair. Okay, so now here the play shifts dramatically, right? Um, they go from sort of curious bystanders to being involved right i mean at this point mrs hale and mrs peters legally should tell the evidence that they found right that's the hidden piece that could send many right away uh we get the little maybe they would have but the county attorney uh you know does some more teasing and uh you know mrs hale doesn't really appreciate it right or mrs peters doesn't really appreciate it well ladies have you decided whether she was going to quilt it or not it uh, we think she was going to nod it. Well, that's interesting, I'm sure. Uh, has the bird flown? And then we get Mrs. Hell lying, right? We think the cat got it, right? And we know, as that was established earlier, that there is no cat. Minnie Wright was superstitious about cats. Okay. She liked the bird. She was going to bury it in that pretty box. When I was a girl... My kitten, there was a boy took a hatchet and before my eyes and before I could get there, if they hadn't helped me back, I would have hurt him. I wonder how it would seem never to have any children around. No, Wright wouldn't like the bird, a thing that sang. She used to sing. He killed that too. All right, so again... Uh, what we're seeing is the bird a uh, couple pages before this uh, the you know many right and the bird sort of symbolized each other now the bird symbolizes uh, 
you know, that's like Minnie Wright's child, right? So, it, so the bird has multiple meaning there, and the fact that it, it likely was John Wright that killed the bird. I've had students say, well, how do we know uh, Minnie Wright didn't kill the bird? Uh, it, it seems to be, it seems like that would be a hard argument to really support uh, in an essay. I mean, it, it's, it's fun to throw out in the class discussion, but when you have to really support it, 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 it becomes a, a little less uh, tenable. But um, Mrs. Peters, she says, we don't know who killed the bird. And Mrs. Hill is like, I knew John Wright. Now, and I like that uh, the sort of use of logic there by Mrs. Hale. Mrs. Peters is essentially arguing, hey, we weren't there. And Mrs. Hale was like, hey, sometimes you don't have to be there to know what happened. If you know the people who were there, that's that, that's almost as good, right? Uh, so Mrs. Peters, it was an awful thing was done in that house that night, Mrs. Hale, killing a man while he slept, slipping a rope around his neck that choked the life out of him. His neck choked the life out of him. Mrs. Peters again, we don't know who killed him. We don't know. Uh, and then Mrs. Hale seems to be in her own place. If there had been years and years of nothing, then a bird to sing to you, it would be awful still after the bird was still. And Mrs. Peters, I know what stillness is. When we homesteaded in Dakota and my first baby died, after he was two years old, and me with no other okay so uh how long do you think they'll be before they're done looking at the evidence right mrs hale just wants doesn't want to talk about this right uh, which i get it right it's it's a it's a tough thing to to talk about uh these things that are um, you know she, they see the dead birds bringing up all these memories for their own lives uh, but what we're seeing here is what you know the, the pieces of the puzzle being put together Okay. And then Mrs. Peters, she says, hey, I know what stillness is, but the law has got to punish crime, Mrs. Hale. All right. So she's saying, hey, there's no room for vigilating justice in our justice system. She still, there still needs to be a punishment. Okay. Mrs. Hale, I might have known she needed help. I know how things can be for women. I tell you, it's queer, Mrs. Peters. We live close together. and We live far apart. We all go through the same things. It's all just a different kind of the same thing. And I really like that part um, because I think this is true in all aspects of life. I mean, think about people, like groups you identify with, right? Like you're all, if you're watching this, you're likely a college student right now, uh, first year. And, you know, you sort of share a kinship with first year college students around the world. Y'all are all going through Sort of the, some of the same things, it's just a different type of same things depending on, you know, your major, where you live, what responsibilities you have. But there is a little bit of a, a, a connection, even if those connections maybe look different depending on who you are and where you live. And uh, then this, this theme of sort of recognizing that, that um, you know, there are differences that, that do you know, like separate us and make it uncomfortable uh, to be around uh, each other. But um, th that doesn't always mean that, um, you know, there can't be uh, some sort of you know, reconciliation. Uh, she goes, if I was you, I wouldn't tell her her fruit was gone. Tell her it ain't. Tell her it's all right. Take this in to prove it to her. Mrs. Peters still in denial. Doesn't really want to talk about it. Mrs. Hale. Right. Maybe that maybe they would. Maybe they wouldn't. You know, maybe they would think this is silly. Maybe they wouldn't. Right. Attorney comes in. Well, no, Peters, it's all perfectly clear except a reason for doing it. But, you know, juries, when it comes to women, if there was some definite thing, something to show, something to make a story about, a thing that would connect up with this strange way of doing it. OK. And then um, we get these um, these senses of identity. Mrs. Peters, uh, she's, uh, you know, she, you know, she might be uh, married to a police officer, but she's not just, you know, a wife, right? She's her own person, and so when he says, no, uh, no, Mrs. Peters doesn't need supervising for that matter. A sheriff's wife is married to the law. Ever think of it that way, Mrs. Peters? Uh, 
right? Not just that way, right? See, she's not just uh, who her husband is, right? So maybe that pushed um, that pushes them over the edge. Uh, the the teasing becomes too much. And again, I just want to emphasize that the sheriff, uh, Hale. Um, the county attorney, I don't think that they are meant to be um, bad guys in the play, um, just antagonists for Mrs. Hale and Mrs. Peters, who are the the, the, the protagonists, the people that we're sort of following throughout the story. But again, um, as we end, this state, these stage directions are really important because they uh, give us an insight to the to the that final decision to hide the key piece of evidence and essentially send it to the prison with many Hale so that she can bury the bird and then also not get convicted. So Hale goes outside, the sheriff follows the county attorney into the other room, then Mrs. Hale rises, hands tight together, looking intensely at Mrs. Peters, whose eyes make a slow turn, finally meeting Mrs. Hale's. A moment, Mrs. Hale holds her, then her own eyes point the way to where the box is concealed, right? With their eyes, they're both saying, you do it. No, you do it, right? No, 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 you do it. Suddenly, Mrs. Peters throws back quilt pieces and tries to put the box in the bag she was, she's wearing. It's too big. She opens the box, starts to take the bird out, cannot touch it, goes to pieces, stands there helpless. Um, and I think it's, it's interesting. Mrs. Hale, the one who wanted to keep changing the subject, is the one who is able to snatch the box, put it in the box of her big coat, enter the county uh, attorney and sheriff. Right, She does it just in time. And since this is a play, you can even imagine it on stage. Right, they probably got a prop door. Someone's on the other side of the door, turning the handle slowly as they're doing this, and so kind of creating that dramatic tension on stage. And then the county attorney uh, facetiously uh, says, "Well, at least we found out she was not going to quilt it. She was going to what do you call it, ladies?" And Mrs. Hale says, "We call it not it, Mr. Henderson." And if you've ever uh, played tag as a kid, and the idea of you know, the last person to say not it is it. Um, there is a, a, a pun on that, a little play on that, that whoever's it, is, it's not many right. Whoever's going to sort of get in trouble, it's not uh, going to be many right. So um, the, the, that's kind of the, the, the play, uh, just in sort of a very brief nutshell. And just there's a couple of ways to discuss the, the the play and in, uh, in terms of your essay right so you're arguing you know, you know either Minnie Wright is um, guilty and should be punished to the fullest extent of the law whatever that is to you life in prison death penalty whatever that's not as important as the argument you you make to to put that together or you can argue the other side uh, that she is uh, you know that she is she might have uh, committed a, a crime, but maybe it was in self-defense. Maybe you, could, well, you know, there's there's different uh, arguments one can make, which we'll um, talk about uh, in another video. But just wanted to get the that initial lecture down, just so that we get past the the who did what stuff. But maybe look at that extra layer of maybe what Glassbill the author was trying to do, and then also uh, what some of the things that happened in the play. What, what exactly do they mean? Uh, the people in the play, what do they symbolize? So uh, anyway, we'll talk a little bit more about the arguments you can make with trifles in the next video, but just keep an eye out uh, for that.